Have you ever heard of zeolites before? Probably not. They're not a race of aliens from Star Wars or Star Trek. It's actually a group of minerals with some pretty interesting properties. I've got some here, so let's take a closer look. Pew! Geology is really cool. Let's go lick some rocks. Yeah! Hi, my name is Brooke and I'm a geologist. It's been a while since I've last made a video, but I've had a couple of good excuses for the delay. Firstly, I've finally finished my PhD here at Oxford, so I'm now officially a proper doctor of rocks. I also had a wee accident and fell off my bike and uh, broke my collarbone into several pieces. You can check out the x-ray above. Bones, of course, are made of a mineral called hydroxyapatite, and it turns out I managed to land on the ground with more than twice the tensile strength of hydroxyapatite. So that's been fun. Not to mention we've got this whole pandemic situation going on. University has been locked down, so I haven't had access to my usual collection of samples and filming locations. On that note, I want to say a big thanks to my pal Henrik, who's loaned me the zeolite samples to use in today's video, so cheers Henrik. Also, just before we get into the video, I want to tell you all about something that's happening on Twitter called the Mineral Cup. This is something that happens every year where a list of minerals is drawn up as the contenders and they get played off against each other like any other kind of sporting event. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You don't have to be a geologist or a scientist to join in. In fact, it's a lot more fun if you're not because you get to learn a lot of facts and see a lot of cool pictures of different minerals, a lot of which you might not have even heard of. I always learn something new every time I play it. So head over to Twitter at, at Mineral Cup and then hashtag Mineral Cup 2020 to see who's still in the running. Sadly, my favourite Zircon has been knocked out, but two of my other favourites, Muscovite and Opal, are both still in the running. So what actually are zeolites? So in the Gabbro episode linked above, you might remember I said that when a Gabbro lava reaches the surface, it becomes a basalt, which is like a fine grained Gabbro. Basalt's probably the most boring rock on the Earth's surface. But if we're really lucky, a basalt might get hydrothermally altered, and that's where zeolites can form, and zeolites are pretty interesting. If you encounter basalt in the field, you might notice that it's encrusted with lots of white crystals, or they might be filling in little bubble shapes or cracks and crevices within the basalt. Those are the zeolites. Most of the time you'll find that they're a soft white powdery texture, or sometimes it can be like little spiky needle-like crystals or little tabular crystals as well. Zeolites can be quite a soft mineral as well. They have a hardness of only about three to four on the Mohr scale, so you'll be easily able to scratch them with steel or glass or some other harder mineral, but you won't be able to scratch them with your nail. Zeolites form when hot alkali-rich fluid passes through the basalt and then starts to hydrothermally react with the feldspars and pyroxenes that make up the basalt. I'll do an episode on basalts in the future, so don't worry about that too much at the moment. These hot fluids could be related to the eruption of the, the basalt, so the basalt might go into some wet rocks or onto the surface of the earth where there's water, and then the water will be superheated and react with the basalt as the basalt's cooling, or it could be hot fluids that's intruded into the rock long after the basalt has cooled down and is, is cold and solid. And occasionally, when the conditions are right, you get nice big crystals growing, like those crystals that we have here. This first one we're looking at here is a nice polished crystal of scolocyte. You can see it's got that web-like texture inside it, and that's because zeolites are very rarely pure. When they're natural samples, you'll often find that there's a lot of different zeolite minerals mixed up in there. <clears throat> And there's probably even some other non-zeolite minerals mixed up in there, like calcite, maybe some quartz as well. But looking at those needles, I'm guessing that that's probably another zeolite. This next one's called stillbite, and this is one of the more common zeolites, and I think it was the first one that was identified. There's a lot of water in this stillbite mineral. And it was identified because when it was cooked, even though it was cooked dry, heated up dry, it gave off large amounts of water. Here's some more of that lovely pink still bite. And this time, the thing it's growing on is called, the mineral it's growing on top of, this white and grey stuff is called lomonite, which I think is another zeolite. This one has some nice crystal shapes in it. Here's this other larger one. You can see lots of radiating 
needles, acicular needles are called in fancy geology speak. It's pretty cool, more of that lomonite. Next up we've got two examples of another common zeolite mineral called hewlandite. So this one's one or two large crystals. You can see a bit just fell off there because it's so so soft and it's breaking down in the surface conditions. This one's again got lots of other powdery zeolites attached to it. You can see it's like a cluster of needles. If you look at the cross section you can see it's a cluster of needles radiating outwards rather than a single chunky crystal like you'd expect with something like quartz. This other hewlandite again is mixed in with I think some powdery stillbite. And you can see rather than you're still getting those long needles there, you can see the, the crystal faces. You can see it's got that uh, vitreous luster to it. This hasn't been polished, but these are some nice little crystals. The camera's really struggling to focus on it. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Here's our last one we're going to look at. Check out that name. Apophyllite. Lomonite yet. So it's probably apophyllite and lomonite from Pune in India. Those are some hefty, chunky crystals. You see lots of nice growth striations on them as well. That's those lines along, let them go along there. So there's some big, lovely crystals. This is what happens when you've got a big cavity, a big gas or fluid filled cavity within basalt and along and lots of hydrothermal fluids you can grow these nice big crystals so the lomonite's probably that powdery stuff on the contact here with the basalt and we have plenty of the original basalt so basalt is normally it's still fine grained but basalt is normally black this basalt is going green because one of the other hydrothermal products are serpentine clays like antigorite and they are these lovely green colours. So two for one, excellent. See, basalt gets interesting when it starts getting turned into clays and zeolites. Zeolites are metastable and this means that they break down relatively quickly on the Earth's surface. This is because conditions on the Earth's surface are colder, drier and under less pressure than the conditions where the zeolites tend to form. Zeolites have a unique structure formed from alternating rings of silica, which is silicon dioxide, and alumina, which is aluminium oxide, that connect together to form long tubes. Tubes. <laughs> this tubular structure means that zeolites are very porous, and so they can adsorb a wide variety of different materials. This means that zeolites have a wide array of practical applications. They can be used as things like molecular filters and catalysts, but all the way through to things that you'll find in your own home, such as blood clotting bandages, washing powder, and even cat litter. That's it for this time and our quick tour of zeolites. Thanks for watching. Let me know below in the comments if you've seen any cool zeolites, or if you've got any questions or other things you want me to make a video on. Next time you see some basalt, stop and have a look to see if you can see some zeolites there as well. See you later, rock nerds. Bye! Have you ever heard of zeolites? No, of course you have. You're a camera. Now, you're probably thinking that I'm an idiot. And you'd be right. This, all the igneous petrologists just got really angry. <laughs> so sad. Oh. Zeolites form when hot. Cake. Delivery cycle. Wow. They're not a race from Avali. Greetings, we are the Zeolites. Our alien powers include high adsorbency. Mm.